What's up Outdoorsman, Greg here and today I'm going over every single thing in my pack so you can get a no BS weight for what it takes to be a saddle hunter. Now I'm coming to you from G2 Outdoors headquarters in my garage where I have every single thing imaginable that it would take for you to be a DIY guy and a saddle hunter. So pardon the mess, but my season has started. I'm going hunting this afternoon, and I wanted to go over this quick video about everything that's in the pack. Not just what some guys do. They'll, they'll just weigh like a tree stand, a climbing stick, and a pack. Well, that's not a true weight for what it takes to get in the woods and do a hunt. So I'm going over everything, calls, knives, straps, Everything I have that I take on a hunt, I'm going over that and I'm going to weigh everything so you can see exactly what my weight is and how light you can be if you transitioned into a saddle hunting setup. First of all, my pack. This is a cheap Timberhawk inexpensive pack that I got from Walmart. I like it because it's small and compact. Now I have bigger packs like the uh, Horn Hunter main beam. This pack I'll use if I'm going on a trip or if it's winter and I have to pack a lot of stuff. It has a lot more capacity and I'll use that for, uh, um, like I said, late season hunts where it might be cold or I'm taking a big heavy parka or if I'm hunting out of state and I'm carrying a lot of stuff, I'll generally take that bigger pack. But if I'm hunting close to home, it's early season, I don't have to carry a lot of stuff. I like these small packs. Now I also just picked up this pack this year. This is kind of a different pack. It's from Game Plan Gear and it's one of these winged packs. It doesn't have uh, you know, traditional pockets. So I'm gonna play around with that later this season. But for now, this is the simple pack that I like and I wanna go through everything that's in it. So we'll start at the top and we'll just move our way down. This is just a DIY uh, this is a DIY backpack holder that um, that I made. It's made out of AM steel, and uh, I have a video on this. If you want to see how I use it, you can check that out. So that's in there. That's in the top. Uh, headlamp. Everybody needs a headlamp. That's in there. Also in the top is a, another headlamp, a spare. This one's super light and it's rechargeable, so I always have a spare. That is everything in that pocket. We'll skip the the main pocket. I'll do that last. In the second pocket, I've got my rangefinder, and I keep this on a leash because of how I, uh, a retractable leash because of how I use it in the tree. I did a video on that as well that will be uh, at the end. You can watch that video on how I use the retractable leash and why it makes a big difference. Also in this pocket is spare batteries. Uh, just a bunch. I got triple A's, I got double A's, spare batteries. That is everything for the middle pocket. On the side pockets, I keep on, I take on every hunt a grunt call. A rattle bag. That is it for that one. On this side mesh pocket, I keep a pair of scent lock gloves. I don't know if uh, scent lock matters, but that's what I have. They're lightweight, they're for early season, so I use that a lot. Over to this pocket, I carry a folding tree saw. Everybody needs one of these. Also in that pocket is a uh, can call. On this mesh pocket, I keep the number one accessory that I have to have in South Georgia. I keep my thermocell with extra smelly things, whatever those are called, and then extra butane over here. So I've got one of each. Thermocell goes with me on every hunt. In this pocket, I've got Reflective tacks, um, use those mainly more for scouting purposes ahead of the season, but you can also use them if you're trailing and you run out of anything, put a tack in the tree if you're on a blood trail at night and you can see uh, where your last found blood. 
Same reason I use these. So these are these little alligator clip reflective, uh, reflective strips. I use these a lot when I'm going on a run and gun hunt, on a mobile hunt. I just have them clipped onto a piece of 550 cord. And uh, I use these a lot. So when I go off the main trail, I'll start this. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll put one of these every, you know, 30, 40 yards, whatever it is, 50 yards, depending on the terrain. And I'll put these all the way back to where I'm going to hunt so I can find my way back out. You don't have to do that. I've just gotten turned around a few times in places I wasn't familiar with. So I started doing this and I really, really like it. And the last thing that I keep in the pack is all the way at the bottom. This is my kill kit. It's got my Havilon knife. It's got a few extra blades. It's got some 550 cord for dragging. It's got uh, some flagging tape. It's got uh, rubber gloves. Just all the basics that you need for a kill kit. That is it for the accessories. So that is everything I would take on an early season hunt. or well, even a late season hunt for accessories. Uh, I, I don't really bring much more than that. And so in the main compartment of the pack, this is where my tree saddle and my platform goes. So this is my Mantis, uh, my tethered Mantis prototype saddle. There we go. That's got my ropes and everything in it. We're going to go over what exactly is in this thing too. But for now, that's the Mantis saddle. That is a tree stand replacement. This that fits nicely inside this tiny little day pack is my Predator uh, pivot style platform. And uh, I've got videos showing that as well. But that's everything that goes into the pack. So this is my Mantis saddle. This is a tree saddle. Uh, a hunting saddle, whatever you want to call it. It's a it's rated at about 6,000 pounds, or it was built to design to hold about 6,000 pounds. It's your safety harness. It's your tree stand all in one. And in this thing, I keep on my left hip, I keep a lineman belt. This is my lineman belt. I've got videos on how you uh, how you use a lineman belt, but this stays on my saddle at all times. And it also has a carabiner and a Ropeman 1 for easy use. I've got videos on all this stuff, so I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm just showing you everything that I have on it. That stays connected to my lineman loop on the saddle at all times. It's just a girth hitch. It stays there at all times. In the same pocket, I keep my tether. This is an 8-foot rope with a factory spliced in, so there's no bulky knots or anything like that. I mean, it's itty bitty. Stronger than knots, actually. So anyway, this is my eight foot tether that lives in the same pocket and it's got the Ropeman one and the same wild country ascent light carabiner on that. That's everything on my left hip. On my right hip, I have another pocket. In here, I keep a face mask, A set of pruners, so if, while I'm climbing, if I need to snip something little, I've got that. If I don't want to break out my saw, I can clean up little stuff with that. Then I've got my uh, accessory strap. This goes around the tree, and it, you can see it's got these little molly loops. And that's what I hook my gear to. So earlier when I talked about how I uh, have my rangefinder on a retractable leash, I'll attach that to one of these loops right here and so it stays right in front of me. It's really easy to use. I generally hook my grunt call, my rattle bag, whatever I want easy access to on the tree, I attach with this little guy right here that lives in this pocket and never goes anywhere else. And the last things that I have in that pocket are my clipter, which I'll show you that real quick. Uh, my clipter, which this is a carabiner that I clip onto another loop and then this is my bow holder. So this swivels wherever I want to put it. This clips around the tree and then I just position my bow wherever it makes the most sense. And then I have these two little uh, S carabiners that I use to attach grunt calls, whatever I want. Those live in this pouch as well. The only thing that I don't have on here is my pull up rope. Um, which is uh, 35 feet of paracord and uh, that goes right here in this little exterior pouch and that lives right there at all times. I got to put that on there. So as you can see the weight of this with everything, accessories, pack, uh, safety harness, everything I would need to hunt 
is lighter than most hang on tree stands by themselves. So it's a huge weight savings when you transition to a saddle hunting setup. Now the only thing I lack in this pack is a way to climb the tree. So I'm gonna show those weights as well so you can get a total no BS weight for everything that you need to get into a tree and hunt. So my preferred method and my first choice for whenever I'm hunting mobile is if it's legal, I like to use my Gecko Carbon Fiber Climbing Spurs. Now these things weigh just a little over three pounds and it's they're amazing. You can get in any tree. You're super safe after you figure out the system and you learn how to do it. Use a lineman belt that's already attached to the saddle so it's safe, it's quiet, it's fast. It's just my preferred method. Uh, Jared, my, my buddy Jared uh, Fling and Arrows has a great video that I'll link to in the description below. You can see exactly how he does it. But my number one climbing method adds about three pounds so you're at what uh, 13 about 16 pounds give or take uh, and you can hunt any tree in the woods as high as you want and you're completely safe when you're doing it that's tough to beat now if climbing spurs aren't your thing and maybe they're not legal where you hunt maybe you're hunting on public land piece that doesn't allow anything to penetrate the tree my second choice is the wild edge step ladder system and i've done a couple of diy modifications that uh, that make it even more user friendly in my opinion you're able to get higher with less steps but this is a super fast super light way of climbing essentially any tree in the woods and it's completely public land legal doesn't damage the tree super sturdy I'm a big fan of these steps and like I said I've got a couple of DIY hacks that I'll link to in the description below that you can watch that video to learn how to better use these if you're interested in that sort of thing so this weighs just over six pounds I've got six steps in here. They weigh about a pound a piece. And then I've got a little DIY thing that we call the nader and the sweater, which adds just a little bit of weight. So it's about six and a half pounds. So if you add that to the pack of 13 pounds, you're still under 20 pounds and you can climb any tree in the world. You're safe doing it. And you got all your accessories. Your pack's already in there. And it's just a great way to hunt. So there you go, saddle hunting is truly the lightest way to hunt, especially if you're doing run and gun, mobile hunting, hanging bangs, whatever you want to call it. If you're taking your gear in and out with you on every hunt, you hunt public land, uh, you hunt places where you can't leave stuff in the tree, saddle hunting is a great way to do it. So you should consider it and check out a lot of my videos. I've got a lot of how to's, I uh, explain everything about saddle hunting on my channel. Uh, so you can click on that. I even show, I even have hunts where I demonstrate hunting from the saddle, uh, shooting from the saddle, how to be safe, how to be comfortable. I go over the whole thing. So click around through my channel and you'll find pretty much everything you need to know to be a successful hunter. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. It means a lot to me that you chose to watch it and hopefully it helped you. The whole purpose of my channel is to inspire people to go outside and go hiking and biking and hunting and fishing and camping and rock climbing and get in the mountains and I just want to inspire people to get outdoors.